Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a NIC 1170 Nicolet Instrument Corporation in California. So here on the front we got the number 1170, but on the back of the unit it's called 1174. Maybe the four is the four channels. I don't know, but it's different. That is a little bit funny. It looks a little bit like we got a plug-in module and the plug-in module is called model 171-4 for input signal digitizer. So it looks a lot like an oscilloscope front end. We got some filters, we got some ADC resolution bits. Look at that. And we can go, we can view the input or the memory. I mean, it is full of all sorts of funny, funny things. But of course, this is early, early age um, digital oscilloscopes. So I really want to see what is going on here. You can also recognize this frame here. This is a clearly a Tektronik oscilloscope screen plastic. We got some cursors. And what do you know? These are absolutely fantastic. Look what happens. Oh, that is just I'm so sorry. My fingers are in the way here, but. Normally push, push, click, click, and then it goes one up. But here, this is just something. It looks like we have a ton of weird features here. Some two time bases. So time base, we dial in like this, right? And we got a readout mode. So we've got all sorts of pen plotters, this and that, at magnetic tape. What the... Memory access. We've got different arrays of memory. we got some add this and uh, channel this and that, store, la 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 la. So auto stop, so we can sweeps completed and then how many sweeps and then it will auto stop. And we can erase the memory like that and expand from this measure, stop or read out. What do you think about that? It is huge. It's 64 centimeters deep from the switches to the heat sink. It's 32 centimeters high and 42 centimeters wide. And I don't know if you can see here on my table, my table is 82 centimeters steep. And this is what is left. I mean, it's not all the way in, but I need also to have space for the all the stuff on the back. Or maybe I should show you the back. Here it is on my scale. I think we can see it's uh, it's really difficult to see, but it's 35 kilos on my scale. This huge instrument. Whew. I'm still a little bit tired of poking around with this one. It's 35 kilos. I just had it on my scale, so it's really, really heavy, and it's just. All sorts of expansion stuff here. Control, recorder, digital I.O. and RS-232. How many VNC connectors can you count here, huh? It's got different inputs. What is that? CRTX, Y, so an external. And then pen, pen down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is going to be very interesting. See, it was modified with another mains connector. So this is now an IEC connector. So that is fantastic. 
And here is, of course, the instrument label where I set model 1174. Serial 7999. So how old is this? Is this, a, is this the year? This 79? Because I was just guessing on 1970. Because I got uh, other instruments that looks so much like this, and I just guessed 1970. Well, I can't Google anything. There's no information about this uh, at all. So if you know anywhere I can find some information, please link to it. So this is the left side of the unit. That'll be the plug-in area here is nicely and shielded high voltage supply for all the crt stuff i suspect all the all the anode stuff is down there we got a little uh, rectifier on that heat sink there and another one that is nice and cold really big and hefty capacitors and in here, I don't know if we can see this, but down there, there's a very, very big E-Core transformer. And this is, of course, the original transformer we can see. I don't know if we can just barely imagine it is in there. But what is that? There's a new transformer here at the back, hidden exactly behind the CRT. And uh, this is my mains entry. And those wires goes, of course, to a fuse, and then it goes to this transformer. And then we got three wires going to the entry of the original system. So can it be this is isolation, or is it voltage step down? So because the original system maybe used other voltage ranges, but... I think I have a, the answer to that already, because look at that. We have all the voltage ranges here. We have all the selectors and good stuff around here. So that means this transformer up here must just be isolation. Wow, wow. Let's look a little bit on the plug-in boards. We got huge boards here, and there's one missing. But there's also a collar missing here, and I can see... The numbers goes directly from four to five. So that means this one is not missing. It was not supposed to be there. So far, so good, right? So the first one here is just the power supplies. I think I'll try and pull up the different boards and inspect them a little bit deeper. This is just the first little walk through. So I know a little bit about what to expect. I can measure the different voltages here, so all that is perfectly fine. Easy measure point, easy adjustment point. So far, so good. Oh, we got a really nice DA converter right there. But then I find some wires here. But look at that. I think they go somewhere like that. What, where are they going? Hmm, I got some XY stuff. That is not good. Somebody's been poking around with it. So I'm still struggling a little bit to get the first board out here. I think this is the power supply deflection board. I've got some uh, connectors here. And to be able to pull up the board, I need to pull out all the connectors. And so far, I think they are all different. You need to push the sides and then pull them out. And this, look at that, the two flat cables there to the left. This looks definitely like um, deflection. Really beautiful two layer boards and they're huge and they're full of all sorts of uh, little notes and that will help me CRT this and that and uh, 
uh, all sorts of good things. And here we see the 1170 and there's also a date. 1978 again I think it is. Okay, that is rotation. This explains this uh, long thin cable to the CRT, obviously. Let's look at the other side. I'm still fighting a little bit with this uh, wire here. So there's no connector up here. I think they had the idea there was supposed to be a connector, but it's somehow moved down here. And it's a little bit difficult to pull out here. I need to take everything apart. So I just mingled the cable around like that. So now we can actually see this entire power supply board and deflection. So that's of course the CRT deflection stuff. Got a little bit of high voltage going on here. And that's of course because deflection is running at a, probably a couple of hundreds Okay, it says here 150. So that is what I would expect in this uh, range. We got some low voltage stuff going on here. 30s, uh, 55s from 1977. Yeah, that's probably be uh, the four low voltages. I would expect to find a few more big, hefty regulators. What is? Is that supposed to look like that? Did we already find one of the bugs? Simply by visual inspection, this one here. That's a blown up capacitor. Hoppa hoppa, lucky me. I just added a little bit more light and that's definitely a blown up tantalium capacitor. It says one micro 35 volt. So now I will hunt down these capacitors and see if I can find any more so I need to pull out all the boards and look for blown up tantalium capacitors. So, so far, so good. So here's another wire I need to remember. And this is nicely labeled. I took out two other connectors here called one and two. And they were so nice and friendly to add these little labels right there. So I should be able to figure this out, right? So the next big board and I can tell what that board is because it's written right here vertical display time base cool so it's play back the vertical using a digital to analog converter and this is of course a time base and uh, we got tons of counters see the 192s all over the place Count this and count that and set up how much you want to count. And uh, the circuit board is, of course, laid out by hand all over the place. we got a few little funky things here. See the lines here of the layout? They're not straight. And it's full of these extra wires just to make it easier to do their layout. That's a really funny dip configuration switch with four little movable switches i think that is absolutely fantastic how is that i've never seen exactly this type before where you move four little things to the side really really and that's of course the Bohr brown da converter Got a little bit of uh, analog chips. Why are they calling all these P3? Three eighty six. I don't know exactly what's going on here. To be honest, I'm still looking for the memory. That's a, probably a little relay, and that will be some analog and scaling and. Uh, there's some LS-153, tons of that. 
This is the back side of that board. Just a beautiful. Without any power planes or any cool return path for any signals like that. It's just crossing all sorts of stuff on the other side. A little bit amazing. You could do all this on a two-layer board. Nobody would believe you today if you came and said, Hey, I can do this on a two-layer board. Tons of ICs and whatnot. I think you're going to enjoy this board. This is absolutely amazing. Here we go. This one is the readout control board. All right. So here is what you can do. You have a serial interface where you can set up the ball rate. Here you go. So there's a ball rate switch where you set up all that. And it is definitely this one. So here's, of course, a crystal for clocking out the serial data. So to handle the serial data, there is this is the access to the internal display memories. So there is, of course, the, we didn't have a dual port RAM back in the good old days, right? So using this interface here, we get access to the internal memory, copy all this into the playback system using the serial system. <laughs> I think this is so fantastic. And here we go. This is done with LS367s and one seven four on the other side and we have you can probably show you guys this on the other side of the board see they're connected like that so we get all the bits from each system this way around and then all this data here goes to the so so so, so here we convert display curves in a digital format to a like a comma separated system that will be able to transmit on a serial bus and there isn't any cpu a little bit of uh, fixing uh, improving wires in this area but i think it's just super super fascinating can probably take a little close up of this is of course the serial output latching and converting and that will of course be the internal local access well 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 you have tons of counters obviously we're counting around and accessing all the internal registers and, and memory access, obviously, by counters, 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 counters all over the place. So this is board number two. And this is the memory. This is the one I've been looking for. Isn't that a beautiful area of uh, memory chips? We only got a little bit of them mounted in this unit, and they are 2114. So that means it is uh, 4096 bits in each one, organized as uh, 1000 addresses and four bits, four data bits in each of these. So that means you need two of them to make one kilobyte, because in the byte world, you need eight bits. So if this is one kilobyte, my finger is covering one kilobyte, you'll see we got 20 of them, and that means 10 kilobytes in total memory. I think also this unit playbacks this data because we got two DA converters and the other one is over here and I also believe we got a little bit of 
data interfaces and counters and good stuff to access our memory over the buses and I'm really lucky to find these two stickers didn't fall off yet because that will tell me where to put my two missing cables and I don't find any more of these leaked um, capacitors I see them all over the place but none of them leaked so far so I think I'm quite happy about that so that was just some chip enabling or something like that on this side and then we have power and of course they only mounted the decoupling capacitors here one little decoupling capacitor per row of these I mean it's not a whole lot of capacitors to be honest a little here here I mean that that's that's all that's all it takes to make this uh run aren't you a little bit impressed So there's probably some lines going the other way on the other side. Uh -huh, look at that. Four bits, four bits, four bits. Probably going that way, right? And of course we have these constant wires of fix this and fix that. So here's a little signal and then it went through a resistor and a capacitor so this is a little delay to make something work and exactly as i imagined got four bits going that way and all the addresses goes that way to the address system like that so i think they're actually connected together like that and then we have 16 bits of data is that right or it's because they have it in banks or they're using the different uh, channels or something like that i don't understand exactly what they're doing here with all those bits it's just beautiful what do you think about this layout style so here it's nice and curved and then well maybe another day this is how we feel and that will be of course the first module and i also wanted to see if i can pull this up but there's one little obstacle see down there there is a connector and i need to figure out how to pull this out and it is behind Ah, maybe it comes up. Maybe it's not a problem. And here is board number one taken all the way out so you can enjoy its full glory. I am so impressed about what they put into this unit. It's amazing. What you see here is written on the board. 2901. And we've got five of these. That would be almost like a CPU, but a very, very simple type of CPU. So it's a 4-bit CPU-like device. You can actually run very, very simple programs in these. They can uh, do um, add and uh, subtract and count and uh, like very, very simple things. And the idea is you can just use more and more of these and build your own CPU to whatever kind of bit width you want. So this is what they've done. So we've got four bits in each, right? And then there's, of course, a microprogram for each of them in the little memory chips up here. And that is definitely super sexy. And here we've got some other chips from the same family they're called 2911 that's a 4-bit address sequencers also used for this system here got tons of little buffers and uh, stuff like that to drive all the different signals around <laughs> but 
this is definitely the brain of the whole system. We still, I still find some of these capacitors here, but I cannot find any one that is uh, broken. So that was just this one little capacitor. So now we'll go and repair that one, and then we can probably uh, have our first power up and see how much this works or how little it works. Shall, of course, see the back side of the fantastic CPU board. And there you have it with all the different bits going out here and then it goes up to their memory chips up there. It's quite funny they are using different sockets for some of the signals like really long and all that. And the layout technique is just so random with the different angles and the curved and then the 45 and those um, and it's just tracks that's not even parallel not even tried to make them parallel whatever angle yeah we got it <laughs> oh isn't that just lovely here we got a lot of equal sections so they copied see the same and the same and the same and the same i don't know what that or sister is doing yeah and here's the text control processor so the bottom of the unit um, actually shocks me a little bit i did not expect this don't you think this is a prototype i mean would somebody manufacture something like this it's all wire wrapped or what At least they're using a lot of different colors and uh, marked all the different connectors and uh, all this goes of course to the front panel. But what did you expect this? Not at all. Oi, 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 oi. This is all the rear connectors and uh, interface uh, thingies here. It's digital I.O. and uh, controls something. Well, well, from this angle we can see the big hefty transformer a lot better. So that will be the low voltage lines and that up here is a big hefty rectifier. The low voltage capacitor. And then here on the back we of course got all the five volt regulator transistors so that is how it's done let's look a little bit on the plug-in module and again this is how it looks like from the outside that will be our four input channels looking more or less like an oscilloscope input and all that and uh, yes, not a big surprise to see four individual modules here for the four input channels. A little op amp and some yeah, simple, simple stuff like that. And we got four of these. Okay, dokie, fantastic, right? And then we have three boards that's doing the rest of the stuff. And this one is called a, um, I don't know interface okay dokey plug-in interface with just a lot of ttl chips so not super interesting got some really funny wires going all the way down to the connector like that then there's another module not mounted you got three of them and here is another one with full of wires multi-input interface plug-in and that is the one i want to show you because i think we got another lead capacitor down there okay here we got a little bit of what do you do hand soldering all over the place it's 
I mean, it looks a lot like a prototype that was not supposed to leave the factory, but for some reason it escaped. And um, it's just all over the place, full of all these wires. It looks like some kid's uh, play toy. And it's not super professional, any of it. So, um, yeah, what can we say about that? Got a little uh, okay in 1978. And the, the, here comes some more fun. What is going on here? I mean, that is the plug-in motherboard. And it's just full of prototyping. That is what you call this. I mean, why would you do it like that? This is experimental. Because there is a nice circuit board here. You could definitely make a nice, nice circuit board. It also looks like, see? Let's cut a hole here and pl put this in. And then, yeah, it's uh, this is a nice, nice upgrade. Now we can do this and that. And... And this is, of course, how you do prototypes. And okay, sometimes prototypes, they get sold to one happy customer. And then, so this, this has to be a one-off solution. And uh, if anybody ever finds anything similar from this, common, uh, from this uh, company, could you please comment, send some pictures, send some links. I would love to see what have you found? Yeah, let's try and pull up this board there. The input interface multi and I was thingy. right. Did look like a leaked capacitor down there. So that one, it even looks like a little modified one. See the holes and the way that it's mounted. Mm-hmm. That one I need to replace as well. And then we could probably try and power this up. I'm so much ready for that. I think I want to try and do both things at the same time. So um, let's try and power it up and see what happens. So I dial a little bit of input voltage just to see if we have any shorted rectifiers or anything. And this is 50 volt and it's using six watts so i mean i just want to go all the way up this is perfectly fine so it's a hundred volts and it's using 50 watts now the fan starts rotating and we are going Two hundred and twenty volts, and it's using two hundred watts. And look what we have here. We have a very, very bright beam. Oh my God! It is way too bright. Okay, good. So it's holy camoly. It's doing all sorts of funky stuff. Oh, that's the different. Wow, what is going on here? So it's playback from memory, and where is the focus? It's totally out of focus. So it's, I think it's doing playback from memory. Wouldn't you say that? <laughs> this definitely looks like playback from memory. I want to try and see if I can get something running here before it blows all the way up. What is it doing? It's definitely doing... Oi, 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 oi. What are you doing? Why did you do that? What happened? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. I think this is not good. Erase. <laughs> what the hell do I push? Get some kind of normal. 
Hello. I don't know. Some funky stuff is definitely going on here. Look at all that. This is data... Data noise. And obviously I knew this was not working. But it's, it's alive, so I'm actually a little bit happy. We get all the different... See there? What is actually going on here? I have no clue. So it happened. I was playing with it and then said a big kaboom and then I pushed it off and we got smoke coming out of it. And where the heck is the smoke coming from? But I did hear a large kaboom and now I'm trying to hunt down the smoke. <laughs> but it... <laughs> It just didn't work in any possible way. We got all sorts of data coming out of this and uh, I actually got some lines and I figured out how, how I could erase the memory and then I got some lines and then I was trying to put in some some signals and then I was trying to make it measure and then uh, repeat this and show this. Um, uh, it just don't work and I'm not going to uh, spend a million hours repairing it but and especially now it blew up. Damn it, I didn't have a video on it because I was just sitting and playing and then I, I wanted to come back and look like I was really clever and smart because I got some shit going on. <laughs> it's always like that. Why why don't didn't I have this on video? Terrible. So that's, that was really easy. Uh, I just took out the power supply again. And here's the fun thing. So this is the capacitor I put in. That one is, of course, perfectly fine. And the other one is now blown up. So what is going on with the voltages or AC or maybe there's a rectifier ACing those capacitors or something is to blame. I mean, it can't be like that, can it? So I will, I will give it one more shot and then we'll see if it blows up again. So here's what I've done. Now I've changed uh, both of those capacitors and they, of course, turn opposite directions but that is not a problem right now so this is the ua79 ck or gkc i think they're called this is the four pin uh, adjustable uh, high current series of regulators and this one delivers the negative uh, 15 volts of output and here is the dc input connector from the rectifiers and it says, uh, I don't know how easy it is to see, but it says a positive 18 and negative 18. And that goes uh, to my two tiny little capacitors. And of course the negative 18 goes to the negative and the positive goes to the positive one. So what I've done is I um, yeah, soldered some wires here and I tried to give it plus 18 and negative 18, and then I get negative 15 and positive 15 out. So that, I mean, I have proved on DC input, at least, I get everything nice at five. And it seems to be working. So now I will try and assemble it again. But there's just one tiny little uh, piece of detail I wanted to show you what I also did. So this is, of course, the AC connector that connects uh, from all the rectifiers and this one here is the rectifier that makes a positive and negative 18 and it's also written uh, all over the board here for example and what i did is i took out the capacitors i measured the capacitors to be okay and i desoldered the two wires from the transformer and this way i could also double check the bridge is working so i mean it must work now. The only last little detail I want to do is when I power this up, I want to measure what we actually have of input voltage here or is it full of ripple on what is actually going on. That is the last uh, piece of uh, detail. And then I will try and uh, power it up again. And then there's another little annoying thing. I cannot find a single potentiometer anywhere, even internally, the, where I can adjust the brightness. Um, it's just not possible, but I at least find 
focus. So that one is good. And we've got some other settings here for the CRT. And that will be the high voltage switch mode converter. We got a little transistor and stuff for that down there. So all that is fine. Otherwise, if this is not working, then there's just not uh, any uh, picture on this screen. So it's pretty simple. So I'm going to try and power it up again. Let's first turn on mains and it's using about two or three watts. I believe that will be the idle of the input transformer. Then I just and it's using the 200 watts as it did last time. So all this is perfectly fine. And now I will check minus 21 and plus 21. So obviously this is why the capacitors went warm. I got all my right voltages, plus 40, negative 40. And here's the plus 150. Oops, my plus 150 is only 59. So there is a power supply I need to fix. And this can probably explain why focus and brightness is out of. Uh, <laughs> so let's fix the last power supply as so well. I think I have a little breakthrough with this uh, power supply. Of course, I replaced the two capacitors, but before I carry on here and um, I noticed um, the missing deflection voltage is supposed to be 150 but I have now fixed it so I have 157 regulated and here's the little uh, high voltage regulator for this it is using uh, the 18 volt input unregulated it's using 50 15 regulated as a reference the little rectifier here for the 150 AC. And then you got a tiny little driver NPN and the output NPN. And the 15 volt reference, the regulated, was missing. And I had the idea, what is going on here? It's connected to this and it's connected to this. And uh, what is not going on? I should probably also show you the bottom side of this uh, circuit board so you can easily see what's going on here. So very nice uh, little uh, high voltage regulator. And you can definitely use this uh, schematic for your own uh, tube designs or something like that where you need a nice regulated uh, high voltage supply with a current protection. See the output power goes via one of those uh, resistors down here, this one down there. And... Um, if this one goes into overload, then this LED will turn on because the LED is connected between the drive signal for the pre-driver and the output. This is the output signal. So that means if you're pulling too much input to the whole system via the op amp, then this LED will turn on and then reveals that this thing is out of regulation. Pretty cool. And here is, of course, the back side of the circuit board. I added a little few comments here to figure out what is uh, going on. And this is the uh, plus 15 regulated reference voltage. And it is, oops, somebody cut this track. So why did they do this? It's because this uh, voltage also goes to the back plane and it goes also to the high voltage supply system and I think this voltage is also uh, used to regulate the high voltage and this probably explains why we have so insanely um, powerful beam but it could also explain why we have out of focus because the voltages in the high voltage is not working correctly so let's see if I fixed everything like that i'll try and hold the camera like this and uh, have a finger here on my it's using 200 watts like before so all this is uh, so far fine and see we got a beam and we got the measurements again. Well, it 
didn't fix uh, any of the out of focus or anything like that. Hmm, annoying. So I'll see if I can figure out how to get it. It's definitely some uh, high voltage stuff going on here. Way too bright and uh, whatnot. So I'm not going to spend a million hours making this uh, video a uh, kilometer long. And uh, I could maybe make a follow-up video if I manage to get it working or anything like that. So I think I'm not gonna make this video any longer. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.